if you get a pain at the back which is radiating or moving towards your groin it is most likely because of an obstructing kidney stone or a stone in the pipe of the kidney which is called the ureter in that case the best thing is to call up or visit an emergency physician any physician will do to prescribe you pain medication if there is no doctor at hand then you can safely take paracetamol 500 mg or 650 mg depending on your body weight for acute pain relief but i would suggest for definitive management of a kidney or ureteric stone visit your nearest urologist a kidney stone diet includes a diet which is rich in fresh fruits and vegetables high in fiber content low in calorie content low in protein content and low in salt content the recommendation is salt intake should be about 3 to 4 g a day not more protein intake per day should be about 0.8 g per kg per day also the diet should have plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables as mentioned and high in fiber animal protein has to be restricted sweet and beverages has to be restricted some studies have shown that alcohol intake can reduce recurrence of a kidney stone however it has to be understood that only small quantity of regular alcohol consumption is considered to be safe because of effect to the other body organs the general rule is to decrease animal protein content in the food and to decrease salt content in the food also it's important to avoid sweetened beverages many people also think that certain vegetables or fruits has to be restricted in order to prevent kidney stones but actually the concept initially was that oxalates if we are taken in less amount then the calcium oxalate stone formation is less however it is very difficult to avoid oxalate completely in food because oxalates are present in almost all food that we eat therefore also if we go by evidence only in case of enteric hyperoxaluria less consumption of oxalate is actually proven to be beneficial in all other cases it is just a general rule of thumb that to decrease those foods which have high content of oxalate which includes nuts black tea tomato rhubarb and coffee also spinach these foods if taken in little less quantities may likely produce less oxalate in the body and may contribute to formation of lesser amount of stones there are two important studies one is in 1996 and one in 2013 both were american studies they were long prospective cohort studies which have shown that intake of beer and wine both in lesser quantities about say 250 ml per day have shown that there is lesser tendency to produce kidney stones and uh, the reduction is by about 20 to 30 percent however this cannot be generalized because it varies from population to population and alcohol has other side effects affecting other organs like liver pancreas and it causes gastritis so it cannot be generally considered that alcohol is safe and drinking alcohol or consumption of alcohol is good for health or decreases kidney stones it's just through cohort studies that it has been shown and likely the effect is because of its diuretic action it increases the production of urine and therefore helps to wash out the salts in the urine so the best way to i think mimic it is to just drink plenty of water and not just drink alcohol kidney stone occurrence mainly depends on the geographical region in which we live the environment conditions that is the climatic conditions and also the occupation of the person so especially those who live in hot climatic conditions or dry climatic conditions are at risk for kidney stone formation especially those who work outdoors for long time and who do not drink or do not have access to drinking water at that point of time when they are at work are more prone to formation of kidney stones apart from that 
there are some important modifiable risk factors like obesity, diabetes and of course the dietary factors which includes a balanced diet. If someone who consumes more of artificial beverages, sweetened beverages and then high consumption of animal protein or calories, they are more prone to formation of kidney stones. As said, most of the kidney stones are usually small in size and are located in the interior of the kidney and may actually cause no harm. But of course, as I said, these stones can drop down, they can block the system of the kidney and can be dangerous, they can cause pain, they can cause infection and they can also cause decrease in the function of the kidney over time. Yes, kidney stones can cause kidney failure mainly through two different ways. One is if both side kidney pipes get blocked with stone, then it can cause kidney failure or if the stones cause recurrent infections in the kidney, which is called pyelonephritis, then slowly, slowly the kidney gets damaged due to these infection and can cause irreversible damage to the kidney and subsequent kidney failure. So, kidney stone management is not just dependent on its size. It depends on other factors also like the location, the number of the stone, the age of the patient, the anatomy, the system, everything. So, if we consider a young and fit patient with a asymptomatic kidney stone which is not obstructing its system, then I would say up to 8 to 10 mm kidney stone can be safely observed and if there is any sign of symptom or growth of the kidney stone in the observation period, then we can consider to intervene. Any stone which is more than 10 mm size, even if it is not obstructing, is usually considered for some intervention. Kidney stone usually causes pain in the location of the kidneys. The kidneys are located at the back. So yes, kidney stone causes backache, but this backache is little different from that what we get due to long standing or due to abnormal posture or what we call as mechanical backache. So, usually the mechanical backache is a central backache, but the kidney pain is usually localized to the side of the kidney stone. Apart from that, if the stone gets obstructed in the ureter, then the pain radiates from that side of the loin to the groin. So, basically from the back, the pain comes to the front and towards the groin. Yes, any size of kidney stone is dangerous and the smaller it is, actually we say that it can be more dangerous because there is a chance that it can slip down and cause block of the kidney pipe, that is the ureter. The sperm passage and the kidney or the urine passage is different for most of the place. Only in the distal part of the penis, the two passages are a common passage. So, it is very unlikely that a kidney stone will slip down and will cause blockade of the sperm passage. Usually, it causes blockage of the urine passage alone. Yes, high intake of protein, especially artificial protein can definitely cause kidney stone through increase in the protein catabolic products and uric acid. It is suggested to reduce protein consumption and restrict it to about 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per day. If a kidney stone gets dislodged and gets stuck in the ureter, it can cause reflex nausea and vomiting by stimulating the autonomic nervous response. Yes, kidney stones are known to cause infections. The vice versa is also true. Recurrent kidney infection can predispose to stone formation. Usually, stones are considered as a harbinger of infection. Within the stone lies multiple small areas or cracks in which the bacteria can live for long period and it can form a nidus for infection or recurrent infection. Sometimes in patients who have recurrent urinary tract infection, we try to image and rule out the presence of a stone 
in which case the removal of the stone is considered to be important to prevent the recurrent infection. Most of the kidney stones are calcium containing stones and they are hard. So, it is very difficult for them to dissolve. However, if it is a small stone with adequate water intake, it may get flushed out and can be excreted in the urine. However, only uric acid stone is known to get dissolved because they are soft stones and with alkalinization therapy, they can get dissolved and excreted in the urine. In the past, even struvite stones Acidifying the urine was considered to be a treatment with him acidrin, but now it is considered an obsolete treatment. Yes, there are some medicines which are known to cause kidney stones, especially when they are taken for prolonged period of time. The anti-HIV medication like Indinavir is known to cause stone, which are radiolucent and not seen on X-ray and sometimes even not seen on a CT scan. They are very mild and faint stones. Apart from Indinave, there are other drugs like silicate, like triamtrine or like acetazolamide which are known to form stone. Kidney stones are managed by two broad methods. One is operative management which is the major part of it and the other one is non-operative management. Non-operative options mainly consist of extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, in which a lithotripsy machine gives vibrations to the area of the kidney stone and causing its fragmentation, which is subsequently excreted in the urine. Apart from that, some medicines can be given which help the expulsion of the stone and only for a subset of stone that is a uric acid stone, what we call as chemolysis can be achieved by giving alkalinization therapy which causes dissolution of the stone.